I have to admit, this recipe has been made a ridiculous number of times, but we're gonna try to one-up everybody. How's it going, fellow foodies? Welcome to the first Foodie Friday. Today, we're gonna be making gacha pork roast from Shokugeki no Soma Food Wars. It's the first thing we get to see Soma make, and I know it's kind of been played out to this point, but I couldn't get it out of my head and how much I wanna make a bacon weave. I don't know why. I've been thinking about it this whole time. How cool would this recipe be with a bacon weave? I don't know, we're gonna make, we'll find out. Now this recipe isn't overly complicated. You only need a few things. Realistically, everything we're gonna need is right here. Garlic, shallot, onion, one egg, some cold butter, two packs of bacon. We might not need both, but we bought three just in case. A bag of potatoes, whatever mushrooms you decide. He uses king oysters. I couldn't find them locally. So these are just some really nice creminis and a little bit of rosemary. All of this cost me about $10. First thing we're gonna need to do is peel the potatoes and get those going. Once you're done with your potatoes, go ahead and throw them into a pot, bring them to a boil, and let them cook until they're fork tender. Fork tender just means you can put a fork in them really, really easily and pull it out without any resistance. You want them super soft for this. Now we're gonna get the rest of our mise en place ready. So now I know Soma doesn't actually use garlic or shallot, but he does use onion with the mushroom. I wanna use garlic and shallot. You can do whatever you want. I'm using garlic and shallot. So we're also gonna do the same thing with the mushrooms. We're gonna go ahead and mince these guys up pretty nicely so that way they can be incorporated into the potato without really having too many big chunks. So now for the coup de gras, the bacon weave. Yes, in the show, he just takes bacon that he has and he actually drapes it over it and kind of wraps around the roast and then bakes it off that way. But I want to one up it and make a bacon weave with our bacon strips. We've never made one before. It's super simple. It's like weaving a basket. I've never weaved a basket, but I've weaved bacon. I'm going to show you how it's done. It's not overly complicated. You can apply this to nearly any roast you really want to do. And it's really, really nice once it's done. Oh, uh, we're also going to put some bacon into the mashed potatoes because yes, so for the bacon weave, I'm gonna be working off of this piece of parchment just to make my life a little bit easier later on. Take three strips of bacon to start and lay them next to each other with all of the meats facing each other and all of the fat areas facing each other. Now to show you how you start, all you're really gonna to need to do is take this middle piece, fold it back, take another strip, lay it right over it, and then lay this back. And then you're gonna have this weave pattern. You're gonna continue this pattern until you have as big of a weave as you really need. I like to go about eight strips by eight strips. And there it is, your beautiful bacon weave. Now you can take this a step further and put another piece of parchment on it and rolling pin it, but I'm gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna throw a piece of parchment on it to protect it and put it back in the fridge until the rest of our stuff is done. So we got our bacon weave done. Our potatoes should be pretty much ready. We're gonna check those in a minute. Now we're gonna saute off the filling. I know in the show, he kind of does like a light saute, kind of just sweats the onions a little bit, but I wanna hard saute these. So to saute these guys up, I'm actually gonna go ahead and start with the mushrooms. Now I'm gonna take my bacon and start rendering that right away. And because I want the mashed potatoes to be fairly creamy, I'm gonna do a little bit of half and half and a little bit of cold butter. We're gonna melt this thing down just until where the butter is melted. Keep an eye on your potatoes as well. It sounds like they're getting close to being done and my fork goes in fairly nicely. They still feel like there's a little resistance. I'm gonna let them keep going probably another 10 or 15 minutes and we'll check back in with these guys. This is about as far as I want my bacon to go before I add my onions. I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this onion and we're just gonna do one of those. I'm also gonna hit this with a little bit of my shallot and a touch of garlic. He wants the bacon, but he can't have the bacon. Hi, there you are. There you go, guys. There you go. Try to keep them occupied. Okay, back to our bacon and onions. Now that these are smelling wonderful, we have our cream and butter over here melted, ready to go. Mashed potatoes, how you guys looking? You guys are looking like a real mess right now. They're falling apart. I'm gonna go ahead and call it. They're nice and soft now. I'm gonna let those rest for just a minute while we're finishing this up. But you do wanna get to your mashed potatoes relatively quickly so they don't get gummy at all sitting in the water. Remember to season this as well. Hit this with salt and pepper. I know the bacon can be salty, but you still wanna taste this because there's no salt in the onions. I'm gonna go ahead and drain these potatoes, get all the water off of them, all the excess moisture, and then we're gonna go ahead and start mashing them with all of this filling. 
Now we have super creamy mashed potatoes. Remember, give this a taste, see if you want any more salt or pepper in it, but remember, we're also adding our bacon, so the bacon's gonna bring a lot of that salt, but that's gorgeous. Look at how beautiful and smooth and creamy that is. It does need salt, but I'm gonna add my bacon and mushroom mixture in here first. Tastes like a baked potato, and I can't even be mad. <laughs> Try the potatoes. Try the in the mouth. Open it. Open your mouth. I'm gonna poke you with the with the fork. I can't. I can't see. So when I talked about his gotcha pork roast, I talked about adding egg to it. And this goes back to an old classic, the Duchess potato. This was something that I learned in culinary school and it's a way for you to utilize mashed potatoes the next day. You can take them, add some cheese, add some bacon, onion to it, add some egg or egg yolk, fold everything in, pipe them out on a sheet tray, bake them off, and you have this wonderful eggy mashed potato thingy. But what I learned about that is that the egg becomes the binder. So that's what we're gonna use for this. Even though it feels nice and thick, we're gonna still add an egg to it now that it's Slightly cooled down. Don't add it when it's completely hot. That's that's a mistake. You're gonna have weird scrambled eggs in your potato. Whisk this up, add this to this once it's cooled down a little bit, fold everything together, and then we're gonna round this out to fit into our bacon weave. Here is our final concoction. Now it is super creamy. So what we're gonna have to do is let this actually cool down in the fridge for about an hour until it's easier to handle. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn it into a roulade and wrap it with our bacon. Now for this next step, take a bit of plastic wrap, lay it over the top of your board, your landing spot where you're gonna actually keep your mashed potatoes. This will help you give it your final shape. So we're gonna take this. and you should have that kind of shape. Now it looks like a potato log. Take your ends, start twisting them, get them really nice and tight. This will give you a nice looking roast shape. This we can take and put into the fridge for just another 10 or 15 minutes. So that way it completely cools. Wrap this in another layer of plastic because this one looks like it's about to burst. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this again. Then we're gonna come back and wrap this in our bacon weave. So we have our bacon weave, it's nice and chilled. We're gonna take our roast out, line it up, and start slowly rolling this over. We're gonna try to tie it with these. Granted, you should have butcher's twine, but uh, I forgot. And we have a beautiful pork roast, kind of. So honestly, I don't even think we really need to worry about tying this thing. It feels so nice and tight. I'm just gonna give it one more squeeze to where everything is nice and together. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna transfer this parchment lined sheet tray. Do this, it's gonna save you a lot of headache later with cleanup. I have a little bit of a riser here that we're gonna lay the pork roast on so that way we get an even amount of heat going underneath it to cook all that bacon down below. So I just set the roast to broil. So that way we get a little bit more color on it. I did up the temperature to about 375 for about 30 minutes to get that bacon fully cooked and then broil it to get a nice color on it. So now what we have to do is make the sauce. So what I wanna do is take the remainder of my shallots. It's a good amount, but it's gonna be really nice for this sauce and start caramelizing that with just a little bit of garlic. Essentially, we're making a barouge, a traditional sauce that realistically goes really nice with any kind of red meat. I know this is technically a pork roast, so you may wanna do a beurre blanc, but I like barouge and it does fit the theme of the original recipe without the sake. <laughs> this is where our rosemary comes in. Since we did forget this on the actual roast, we're gonna add it to the sauce instead. You're gonna let that reduce by half and then we're gonna fold in our butter to finish the sauce. And there is the roast. Okay, it only burst out of one side. That's not too shabby. But like any good roast, we should let it rest before we cut it. So we're gonna finish our sauce first and then cut into this. I'm gonna kill the heat. This way it won't break your butter. If it's too hot of a pan, it can break your butter. So now we're gonna slowly start adding in our butter. This is the consistency that you want. It's nice and velvety. Look at that. That's gonna be so, so nice on our pork roast. There is our gotcha pork roast, but you know what? It's not finished yet.
There it is guys, the gotcha pork roast, Chef PK style. I ended up wanting to really cut the pork roast and griddle the mashed potatoes because why not? And the filling itself does have all of the beautiful juices from the bacon, the onion, the garlic, the shallots, as well as the really nice barouge that we have around the plate. Now there's one final taste test. I made you dinner. I made a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Moment of truth. Are they coming off? Don't shit me! How is it? Terrible. Every time. Every time. She's going out drinking tonight with friends, so I figured I'd make her a nice dinner. Yeah, okay. All things considered, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, with the exception of I should have added a little bit of breadcrumb to really thicken up some of that creamy mashed potato. It would have still kept its nice consistency, but it wouldn't have been as soft when I went to go ahead and sear it in the pan. The barouge, honestly, you want that beautiful texture and color, as well as that consistency. I mean, it's just a perfect sauce. There's nothing really around it. You can't really go wrong with a nice barouge. But now, my taste test. Waifu said it was terrible. Holy sh! Oh my, I don't know what you, this is so good. Oh my God. Okay, that's ridiculous. That's, oh, it's so rich. All things considered, that is delicious. That I would make again. I absolutely love it. Have you guys made gotcha pork roast? Let me know down in the comments below. Would you want to make it? If you want to support the channel directly, you can check out the links below where you can become a patron where you're going to get a Chef PK notebook for all of your kitchen notes as well as a new recipe every single month. This month, gotcha pork roast. You'll get an awesome Excel file with all the nitty gritty details in it as well as having the availability for the actual ingredients down below. My name is Chef PK here on Foodie Fridays. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food.